it's not just okay, it's important to have a big vision around a central purpose of what it is you're doing. Maybe ask your, your, yourself the question, why does your organization exist? First, thank you all for the invitation to speak here. Um, uh, if I may, I'd like to share my screen real quick as I'm talking about uh, what we do at Ashesi. Uh, I, I used to work in, in tech, in technology at Microsoft Corporation. I'd grown up in Ghana, I'd gone to college in the US and then off to work at Microsoft. And in my early 30s, I decided to leave Microsoft to go, go set up a university in Ghana uh, to prepare myself for that. It wasn't setting up a university for the sake of it. It was really around this purpose that we needed a renaissance in Africa. So, you know, everything about a Shesi has been around this idea that we want to be a catalyst for major change in a development of leaders on the continent. Um, and our mission to educate uh, a new generation of ethical entrepreneurial leaders in Africa was sort of an unusual mission statement for a university, right? Even though many universities around the world concern themselves with, uh, you know, sort of encouraging students to think about the good society and so on, that there weren't many that actually lead with ethics as something that they they claim to be front and center to what they do. Um, there's some that might talk about entrepreneurship, but very few lead with ethics as their mission. And we felt it was really important for us to do that um, sort of in, a, in an unflinching way, because it is really important to have these values-based leaders um, as the agents of change on the African continent. Um, now, we started very humble beginnings. Now, imagine a 30-some-year-old comes to you and says he wants to start a university in a developing country at a time when the whole world is sort of organized around millennium development goals, which did not include higher ed, that very few people took me seriously. But enough people took me seriously that we could get started. And the people that took me most seriously were people who were in my network from Microsoft Corporation, people I'd worked with, who trusted me completely um, and who knew my work ethic and who believed that I was really going to do all that I could to make this vision a reality. And then we rented a, a building, you know, this white building um, in Accra. The roof had caved in when we, we rented it and we just patched it up and got started. Um, so we didn't even start in a facility that looked anything like a university um, in terms of its hardware. But we paid a lot of attention to the software of the organization, the values of the organization, the curriculum, the people, the team, and so on. Uh, and then fast forward uh, a few years later, we had a permanent campus. And the campus, by the way, has grown beyond what you see in this picture. Um, and I show these two contrasting images just to sort of say that it is okay to have a really big vision um, and it's okay to take the first step as a small humble step. It's really important when you do that that you have incredible resilience and deliver the kind of results that will eventually get you the support um, to grow to actually accomplish the big vision that you set out for yourself. Um, so today at Ashesi, maybe about 20% of applicants are enrolled, half of them are, are getting scholarships. About one in every four students at Ashesi receives a full scholarship. Um, tuition, room and board, 48% uh, are women um, and close to 60% are studying, are doing majors in STEM. Now, these are all sort of interesting metrics about a chassis, but they don't really talk to who we really are. Who we really are is about the core values of the organization, the culture of the organization. And that's really what we care about. 
Um, we also care about the output, of course, not just the inputs that I just described here. So for example, 95% of our um, graduates will get a job offer within six months of graduation or completing national service. Um, and 100% of them will uh, be placed within a year. Right? Now contrast that with the norm in Ghana or um, of 10% placement within six months. This is a radically different uh, output than other universities. But it is important that we did this um, on a small scale, and this is our planned trajectory. Uh, nobody looks at this chart and says, this is an organization that is trying to scale very big um, to transform a continent, but actually we are. And, you know, we are now about 1,200 students uh, at our institution today. But we've also, we've already started a project, uh, we call it the Education Collaborative, where we sort of reached out to other universities around the continent. This year, about 144 universities participated in the collaborative, where we're sharing ideas on curriculum, on pedagogy, on administration, management of universities, how to set up our institutional cultures. And that is going to literally affect the lives of millions of students not students on our campus, but students on other campuses that are now engaged with us. And those universities are engaged with us because we are now credible. Um, we've delivered such a good result that they're, they're, they're willing to listen to us. Uh, and by the way, we remain humble, so we're also listening to them, and we continue to grow and learn from others as we go on, on this journey. Um, and to date, we have, um, you know, we've deployed over a hundred million dollars to get to where we are, which is very different than, you know, when I started, I, you know, the, we started after I had raised $2 million. It was really difficult to, to, to fundraise. But over time, as we delivered results, um, we've been able to get the financial support so that we can change the lives of so many people who otherwise would not be able to come to a chassis and through them change their societies and their communities. So I want to uh, just sort of end at this slide and say that um, the key message that I want to share with everybody is that it is actually important. It's not just okay. It's important to have a big vision around a central purpose of what it is you're doing. Maybe you ask your, yourself the question, why does your organization exist? Or why are you doing what you're doing? That is, that is an extremely important question to answer. And that becomes sort of the thing that drives, you should make that drive everything that you do. The second question that you wanna answer that is extremely important is how you're actually going to accomplish that vision figuring out what it is exactly they're going to do. So what is the product? Like in our case, you know, it's a university. It offers so many majors. Um, this is what the curriculum looks like. So what, of what we do, but the, how we do it has to do with institutional culture. It has to do with the, the core underlying values of the organization. What is it that guides our daily decisions and our daily actions? And I would say that that question of how you get things done is, is extremely important. Figure out your purpose. Without that, you're sort of drifting. But once you figure out your purpose, it's really important to figure out what the core values are. And you should also make it guide who you invite onto your team, who you keep on your team. And it should guide how you develop you know, sort of the team, like what kinds of uh, professional development do you give to people who are in your organization? Uh, and if you get those things right um, and you persist, then you're more likely to actually achieve uh, a big uh, result in the world and move the needle in the world. So that's uh, the key lesson that I want to share with you. I must say that I, um, I, I agree with 
with um, uh, Lord Hastings, who said that you know it's it's a good idea to work and save money, um, but it's beyond saving money. It's also about building a network, building social capital that's going to support you in the work that you're you're, you're doing. And I also agree with Cloud that says that it's you know start young. You know don't wait too long. So you've got to sort of find the tension between what Lord Hastings and Cloud are saying of. On the one hand, it's good to start young when you've got a lot of energy. I started in my 30s. Very few people start universities in their 30s. So that was early for me. But I also started after I had worked for eight years at Microsoft. So I had sort of gone and built that social capital and also some financial capital that helped me get uh, my project started. And then the project then took on a life of its own to continue its momentum. What would you say has been the one definitive learning curve for you, managing people, building processes, and developing your brand? Well, it's hard to pick just one thing because there's just so many things I had to learn. Um, you know, understand that I, my training was in engineering and suddenly I had to get up to speed on education, not as a consumer of education, but as a provider of it. Uh, I had to learn to navigate a different sort of corporate culture, you know, an economy. So I, I grew up in Ghana, but I never sort of, I didn't really work here beyond my national service year. So I was familiar with working in the United States. I had to learn to work in Ghana, how to navigate the public sector here. Um, all of those things were sort of big learning curves for me. Um, I think that as an entrepreneur, there comes a time, it's really important, like in the beginning, it's a lot of your energy that goes into getting this thing going and everybody sort of follows you. Um, but there comes a time when you want to sort of get to the next level. You have to learn how to delegate. And, you know, being able to delegate requires a couple of things. One is you yourself um, getting comfortable with the idea and uh, understanding that just as you made mistakes in getting started and, and learn from those mistakes, it's okay to let other people make mistakes and learn. Um, and so it's okay to hand over certain decisions to them. Um, and then the second thing is that it's really important to have a team that you trust in the first place. And so you have to have been paying a lot of attention to who you bring onto your team. Um, so you're looking at both their sort of their professional capabilities as well as their attitude or um, their, what, what, is, what is their character, right? And you, if you get those two things right, it's easier to delegate to people that you know will stick with the values of the organization that you know um, will learn from mistakes, right? It's, it's very difficult to delegate to somebody who you know would, if they made mistakes, for example, would try to cover them up or blame other people and therefore not learn and correct the mistakes, right? So um, that, that was, those were the things I would say that were very key to, um, to, our, to my success.